Thank you. I will now pass over to uh, Jürgen Eriksson of Container, who is going to discuss again the inside view on the Nordic. So over to you, Jürgen. How are you doing? Hi, Angus. Thank you. I'm good. And hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, session with Katina. My name is Jürgen Eriksson, and I'm the CEO of Katina since the 1st of November last year. And I have been in Katina for about uh, five years. Um, Katina is the leading property company in logistics in, in the Scandinavia. Uh, see if I have the slides here is coming, yes. Um, so the contents for today will be, uh, first of all, Katena in brief, and then uh, the market, our view of it today. And uh, then we will have some, uh, some uh, talk about uh, the logistic properties of tomorrow. I'll go back here. This is some technical issues. So here we are. Here we are. Uh, our vision is to to link uh, the Scandinavia's cargo flow, and as I said, we are an owner, operator, and developer of uh, of the logistic uh, real estates. Uh, we are located in in Sweden and Denmark, serving the metropolitan regions of Scandinavia. And as Lena told you before. Uh, there's a lot uh, around the logistic uh, famous triangle in Sweden between Gothenburg, Stockholm and Malmö. We have reliable and long-standing relationships with uh, our broad group of customers and I will come back to that later as, as Lena mentioned uh, uh, to have people on ground that's very good for us. Uh, we have delivered a fundamental strong and durable cash flow and we will do it again in the future. Here are some figures from our report for 2020. We have a legible area of around 1.9 million square meters, a property value about 18.6 billion sec, uh, a very high letting ratio of 96.2% and a loan to value that is close to 50%. Uh, we are listed on the, on the Nasdaq Stockholm uh, market and uh, the market cap, uh, as you can see here, is 14.6 billion and as we speak, I think it's uh, around 15 billion sec. Interesting about Catena is that we are a rather small organization with just 46 uh, employees that make us, us very effectively, we work very fast and tight with uh, our tenants and, and we can respond to, to any kind of issues uh, very fast, uh, no matter if it's a day-to-day -day, uh, life question or it's a huge investment. We are, uh, the, the distance from, from, from the top to the bottom in Catena is, is, is very small and I think that's a great advantage for us. Here is a picture of our, some of our customers included on our customer portfolio. And we are very proud of our customers and we have a, a long relationship with them. And as you can see quickly, a great deal of our customers are strongly linked to e-commerce. Uh, many customers are related also to the food and beverage business, uh, which we feel very safe about it since the segment is not that sensitive to any fluctuations in the economy. And it's also worth to mention that two of our biggest customers, DHL and PostNord, uh, are owned by the government in Sweden, Denmark and, and Germany, and that's, a, that's very good from a risk perspective. Um, yeah, and of course, when I, I said that uh, the, the customers are strongly linked to the e-commerce, that also means that uh, they have had a, a, a real boost uh, the latest year here due to the pandemic. So we feel very safe with uh, our business uh, for the moment. The market today, our view, uh, the e-commerce is about 15% of retail sales and, and we are sure that there will be more to come and we expect strong uh, demand from Priority of segments, uh, especially groceries and cold storage. We can see that the uh, facilities in, in uh, Scandinavia concerning cold storages, they are quite uh, outdated and there need to be uh, more uh, modern and 
and uh, energy effectively uh, storage is uh, produced in the in the coming year. Uh, I think also that you have heard about uh, the ice age is coming uh, in the logistics sector. So I think that we can uh, present some uh, some ice age project. Uh, we can also see that the third party providers are uh, are driving for more uh, spaces in, in the near future. Uh, and that's of course related to the e-commerce once again. We can also see a trend that uh, the industry enterprises are, are seeking to, to reshoring their warehouses and they in some cases want to have them closer to their uh, domestic uh, area uh, in Scandinavia. So they, they, they pick home the, the big warehouses uh, and, and have them closer to the home market, so to speak. Yeah, once again, COVID-19 is accelerating the e-commerce. And in Sweden, the proportion of the Swedish population who e-chopped in December was uh, 85%. It's, it's crazy. And, and, and the e-commerce in Sweden uh, grew by 50% in December related compared with the same month in uh, 2019. So it's a, it's a, it's really, we are really talking about a mega trend. And, uh, and if we are talking uh, to the segment with the grocery shopping online, uh, we can see that we are at least three years ahead compared to a forecast that was uh, made before the pandemic. And as I said before, uh, this drives the demand for more temperated facilities in the future. Some words about the logistic properties of uh, tomorrow. Uh, goods and cargoes will for sure flows. They will remain uh, in Scandinavia. Uh, a long-term need for efficient and smart logistic networks in, in the Nordic countries. Uh, and the mega trends such as urbanization and global trade and digitalization. And, and of course, uh, the uh, online shopping again it will spotlight the uh, logistics. And we need to secure a supply of, of, of goods. Uh, that is essential for our society more than ever in an uncertain times. Then we need to know when the, when the goods will uh, arrive at our home. Good to mention is also that the Nordic uh, countries comprise the 12th largest economy in the world. So it's a, it's a rather big market and interesting market. Uh, in, the, in the future, uh, we need to see what can we do to, to be more uh, creative uh, about uh, uh, constructing new uh, buildings. Uh, we can for sure see that there will be a lack of, of land in the most uh, interesting locations. Uh, we can see if, if, if there is or any existing properties that we can be converted or change function or we can look into if we can explore some more uh, building rights uh, and if we can maximize all the surfaces. Uh, we also need to buy, uh, to, to build on the on the height and maybe we uh, can present the high bay warehouses in the south of Sweden like uh, on the picture here in, in the future. Uh, we can also see that uh, if we can uh, develop uh, logistic clusters that's more efficient and more sustainable when, when different actors can uh, collaborate with, uh, for example, a terminal between a warehouse and, and so on. We also see that uh, sustainable is, is, is the norm uh, in the future and, and uh, it's very... Uh, the strategic location is very crucial, and then we can do the transportation transportations as sure as, as it's possible. We uh, are looking into uh, certificate all our buildings, uh, which means that this guaranteeing a high quality in relations to the tenants and, and their employees. It also guarantees that they are very energy efficient. We uh, are very much uh, keen to look into if we can uh, uh, have, get, letting our tenants to have access to fossil-free fuels in the future close to our facilities. It could be related and uh, linked to, to solar panels on, on our roof. 
And as I started with that, we have almost 2 million square meters uh, letable area. That means that we have also about 2 million square meters r roof that we can having uh, solar panels on. We also see that the green financing will be the new normal in the future. Uh, at Katina, we we are. Uh, this is our operation, and, and as uh, Lena talked about that uh, before, that there is a lot of investors seeking for investments in in the Scandinavian. We can uh, some some parts say that it's like uh, uh, the invisible capital wants to invest in in uh, in logistics, but we uh, we can see it it's more as a, an operation, and and we need to have a very tight uh, dialogue with our tenants, and that's crucial for us in the future. And we can create value between different players in logistic chain to create smart and sustainable solution. It also creates value between property owner and tenant for quality and, and continuity. Uh, we also need to have an ongoing dialogue with the society and authorities, and that's necessary. So maybe we can have some getting more land to produce on in the future. Thank you. That was all for me. Over to Angus. Thank you, Jürgen. Uh, that was really interesting. Um, I was just going to ask you a few questions before we sort of hand over and, and go on to the, the, the panel and Q&A for the outside the outside view. Um, just before I do that, um, everyone, if you can remember, there is a chat function on the YouTube channel. If you want to ask any questions of the panel, please put those in there and I can relay them. I have some already, uh, but yeah, if we can keep those coming in, that would be, that would be great. Um, but yes, Jürgen, um, I think the same sort of question I asked uh, Leanna. Um, Obviously, container very much in the in the local market. How how do you feel about this sort of the international capital that's that's flowing into the Nordics at the moment from your point of view? Uh, it's a, it's a very tough competition out there, but I mean uh, that's uh, that's the one of the play rules, and and, uh, and I think that we can offer the market uh, a great uh, a land bank. Uh, of course, there could be some uh, some lack in the in the processes uh, having new zoning plans, but. Uh, once we have the uh, the zoning plans approval, we can uh, offer the market some really good uh, and interesting locations uh, close to the highways and close to the metropolitans. So that would be our advantage in in, in the game. Uh, but of course, uh, so much capital is coming uh, into the Scandinavian market. It uh, there will be a yield compression, and and we are. We are not there right now to, to compete with the very low uh, yields. Or we try to do uh, some deals in, in other ways. Okay, thank you. And um, for Katina's uh, growth strategy going forward, um, would you consider any sort of portfolio deals? Is, is that uh, interesting for investors looking in as well? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we presented a quite big deal for us uh, uh, the other month when we acquired a portfolio in Denmark, and, and as, uh, a part of the purchase was uh, to to having a new uh, Kitina paper in the market. So it was a win-win. The, the seller wanted to be uh, in the logistic market, but they didn't want to operate the facilities anymore. So uh, uh, that was a, a great deal for us. That does sound like a good one. Um, and then just, just finally, we haven't really mentioned too much about uh, Finland and Norway markets. I just wondered what your sort of view was on, on those uh, on those countries. Yeah, we, we uh, as we are uh, very much in, in, in Sweden and we started to, to look outside the, the, uh, the country, we, we started with Denmark since it's very interesting to, to link down to, to Germany and a huge market in, in, the, in the region of Hamburg. So for the moment, we uh, are looking at, at that direction, but who knows in the future. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Jürgen. Um, we're going to have a, a short video now, and then uh, I will uh, do the Q&A session uh, with uh, William and Mike.